Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where we're going to once again be talking about the new version of DaVinci Resolve that's going to be coming out soon for the iPad Pros M1 and M2. Now, before I get too far into this video, as always, if you find the video useful or you like it, please don't forget to hit that like button as well as consider subscribing to the channel. That way you don't miss any of these videos. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so in the last video, we spoke a lot about what features were going to be coming with this version of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad, at least the features that Blackmagic has currently told us we're going to get. What I didn't really go into too much detail with is who I thought this new version of Blackmagic was going to be best suited for or what the best use case scenarios for this software was going to be. Now, as always with pieces like this, keep in mind that this is just my opinion on how I feel the software is going to be best used or best suited in general, and doesn't mean that's the way it has to be. Now, the first thing I wanna say before I get into anything else with this video, do not run out and buy an iPad Pro M2 for the purpose of using it with this application until the application comes out and you can either see reviews or at least get some information on how well it runs. Because the last thing you wanna do is spend all this money for an iPad Pro, wait for the piece of software, get the piece of software, and then be unhappy with the piece of software. At that point, you are most likely going to be out of your return policy for the iPad Pro, and then you're stuck with this unit that you basically went out and bought for one thing. And let's face it, we all know that Apple absolutely showed DaVinci Resolve in all of their tech demos for the new iPad Pro just for that reason, to get you to run out and go buy it. So my advice on that, pump the brakes on that unless you already have another use case for the iPad Pro. I do want to address some of the comments from my last video where people had stated that we don't really need this version of DaVinci Resolve as we already had LumaFusion for the iPad, which is an absolutely awesome video editing software. The biggest downside of LumaFusion is that it's not free. And that's going to be the key difference between LumaFusion and Blackmagic, at least in terms of the base version of Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve they are going to have a free to use version just like they currently have on the desktops and Mac OS platforms. You will then have the option to upgrade it to a full version just like you do on the desktops. As of now, we don't know the price. I can't imagine it's going to be anywhere near as much as what the desktop version is because they're still going to want to compete with LumaFusion and LumaFusion, if I'm not mistaken, is about around $30. My guess is if they don't do a yearly, which most of us are hoping they do not, that we're going to be looking anywhere between maybe $30 and $60, but we're still going to have to wait and see for this to release before we know exactly what it costs. The biggest thing this piece of software has going for it is that Blackmagic is a good company. I have used their products for years, whether it be software or hardware, and they have been an industry standard for as long as I can remember. Most people can agree that Blackmagic has probably had one of the most fair pricing models when it comes to software. No other company out there is putting out a piece of software as powerful as the base version of DaVinci Resolve for absolutely free for anyone to use. Not to mention that their full version is a one-time fee of $300 and is looked at and regarded from many as still one of the most powerful pieces of video editing software that's currently in the market. The only other company to really do that is Apple with Final Cut, which I believe also runs about $300. However, that's extremely limited to just the Mac users as DaVinci Resolve works on everything, whether it be Mac or Windows. And then your other option is Adobe Premiere, which everyone knows how expensive Adobe Premiere is every single month. And as someone who has swapped from Adobe Premiere to DaVinci Resolve, there is nothing that I can do in Adobe Premiere that I can't do in DaVinci Resolve. However, there are a lot of things in DaVinci Resolve that I can do that I cannot do within Adobe Premiere without having to go out to external pieces of software. So I feel like Blackmagic is going to be in line with their customer base when they put out this piece of software in terms of the quality we're going to get, how often we get upgrades, the pricing model, etc. Now, if you're someone who already uses DaVinci Resolve, my personal view on this is that this is going to be a companion app. While you may be able to download it and use this 100% start to finish 
for a video project, I honestly think it's going to be best used as a secondary companion unit because of the fact that they have already said that it's going to be able to use the cloud sharing project files just like you can on desktop. This will allow you to have a project out in the field that you at least get started on or a project at home that's already been started on that you can then work on in the field. Being able to pull out your iPad while on location and do some editing right then and there to see how your project is going to look and then be able to get back home, open that project on your desktop and keep working is something that we don't really have currently with LumaFusion or really any of the other video apps. And this one feature alone is what's going to make this software so powerful on the iPad and in the portable space. Now, even if you're someone who doesn't use DaVinci Resolve at home, and let's say your tablet is the only thing that you have, this piece of software is still going to be absolutely strong and worth trying, especially with a free version. Because as it is currently, the free version of DaVinci Resolve has about 80% of the paid features of DaVinci Resolve on the desktop platform. If we use that as an indicator of the tablet version of it, the free version is still going to be an absolutely strong piece of software. Now, one of the biggest fears that I do have is that the free version we get may be extremely handicapped. I have seen nothing to make me think that's the case, but in a situation like this, you can't help but to worry about it with how the models are on some of these tablet-based softwares that we've seen from other companies. Again, until we get the release from Blackmagic, we will not know the answer to that. Now, a lot of the other comments that I saw on that video were people stating that now they could use their tablet 100% with zero need for a desktop. While I can honestly say I feel like that is the direction we are going towards, if you're someone who's working on more complex projects, I don't think we are quite there yet. What we've seen so far in terms of the app version is that all we have is a color page and a cut page, and nothing else has currently been implemented into this version of the tablet release. Now, if you're somebody like me in DaVinci Resolve, I edit mostly on the edit tab. I don't really use the cut tab too much, so I would still need my desktop version in conjunction with this new tablet version to get a full edit going start to finish. Now, with that being said, if you're someone who's never used DaVinci Resolve, when I first started using Resolve, I found the cut tab to be far more archaic and harder to use than the edit tab. That's how I ended up learning how to edit on the edit side of DaVinci Resolve. Now there seems to be a big divide with that as there are a lot of people like myself who do prefer the edit tab for their full start to finish edits. And then you have folks that prefer to do it on the cut side. Neither way is wrong. It's just the preference of the user. Unfortunately with this app version, you're going to be forced to use the cut tab. And if you're coming from something like LumaFusion, there may be a lot of features in that cut tab that are not available to you that you are used to using. To me, LumaFusion is more like the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve in terms of what you can do with your video editing. So for people coming over to DaVinci Resolve from LumaFusion, only having access to the cut tab could be a major turnoff for them, at least until the software starts upgrading to the point where it has these extra tabs. Now, moving away from the video editing side of DaVinci Resolve, one of the biggest features on the desktop is being able to not only edit your video, but also work on fusion style effects as well as audio. All of my audio gets processed through Fairlight anytime I record a video. And if I'm out and about using my iPad just for editing, I will 100% lose any of that. I will then have to find some form of audio editor on the iPad in order to take the place of that. Which goes back to what I said at the very beginning of this video, is I think it's going to be an absolute great companion app to the desktop app. Now, if I 100% had to say, who is this piece of software for? My first answer would be anyone who currently edits with DaVinci Resolve and is familiar with DaVinci Resolve. Number two would be somebody who's wanted to get into DaVinci Resolve or do higher end video editing on your tablet, but you didn't want to pay for something like LumaFusion. I have a feeling the free version of this app is going to sway a lot of people away from LumaFusion, and it might even force LumaFusion to put out a free version of their own app in order to try and keep more people over there. My overall advice for this piece of software when it comes out is try it out first. I don't think we're going to be at the point where you can 100% get rid of your desktop and just use the Resolve app 
on your iPad unless you're doing basic video editing projects, at least not yet until they upgrade the software more and add more utility to it. As it stands now with the M2 iPad Pro coming out, power isn't going to be an issue as the full version of DaVinci Resolve ran absolutely fantastic on the M1 iMacs as well as the M1 MacBook Pros and Mac computers in general with no real issues. So we're not being held up by hardware, at least in terms on the M1 and M2 units of the iPad. I think what we're going to get is going to be an absolutely great starting point from Blackmagic getting into this space and getting more editors into their platform. And with the advances in new iPad hardware, Blackmagic absolutely has a ton of room to grow this piece of software, maybe even to the point that it's a clone of the desktop app, at which point I think we can 100% go to a tablet for editing, whether we're at home or out in the field. Now, for anyone who's out there and y'all you're doing is quick vlogging, you know, a quick YouTube video, you know, family videos, the version you're going to get is probably going to be absolutely fine for using tablet only use. That way you don't also have to invest money into a secondary desktop. Now, the one big downside with all of this is as of now, we don't know exactly which iPads this software is going to run on other than the M1 and the M2. And Blackmagic has said that the M2 version of this piece of software runs four times faster on the M2 than it does the M1, which is quite a bit of a difference. With that being said, older iPads that are not using M1 Plus architecture may not be able to run this app very well at all. As of now, we have no word from Blackmagic on if it's going to run on these older iPads. It could be one of those situations where if you have one of the older iPads, you may not be able to download this software onto your tablet if Blackmagic chooses to block iPads that the software doesn't run well on. That's again something we won't know until closer to the release or when it's actually released. I will say if you're on an older iPad that's not an M1 or an M2, don't expect this piece of software to run great. As I said in my other video, it might run well enough to do basic 1080p video editing, but it's absolutely going to have some limitations as your A15 chips or below in the older iPads are nowhere near as powerful as what we see in the M1 and M2 architecture. All right, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this piece of software. How useful do you think it'll be? Again, are you looking forward to using it? How do you want to use it? Where do you want to use it? And what features are you looking for the most to be added to future releases of this app. Let me know down in the comments section. Now that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you like the video, again, hit that thumbs up. It helps the channel and it helps this video greatly. Also consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification if you wanna get updates and alerts on any of my future news, camera and tech reviews, and how-to videos. And with that being said, until next time.